Hey y'all, Tom, ND3N here, and thanks for dropping by my little shack in the corner for a ham shack chat. Now, this might be controversial, but I'm going to try to do my best to answer the question, do you really need an amplifier? Bottom line up front, I don't believe you really do need an amplifier. Let me share a few points with you to see if I can convince you. Uh, but, you know, I'm, I'm not hopeful, but maybe you'll see my points. Uh, and although this might not be the best time to ask, please take a moment to give me a like by popping that thumbs up button. Uh, as always, your comments are welcome, even if they disagree and maybe especially if they disagree with my viewpoint. Now, it should be obvious, amplifiers are expensive. Now, using the ham radio uh, outlet website, I looked up 35 HF amplifiers ranging in price from $7,658 to $1,034. I then took the price of each amplifier and divided it by the highest output rating. That gave me the price per watt of each amplifier. For example, if you have a 1000 watt amplifier that cost $2000, that would be $2 per amp. Uh, I then looked up all 35 amps and averaged everything out and came up with an average value of $2.78 per watt. The price is one I only considered full legal power amps, ranged from the previously mentioned $7,658 to $3,349. I didn't consider solid state amps being different from tube types, although that might be an interesting study for a different video. However, the average price for a 1,500 watt rated amplifier was $5,168.90. Of course, you could look for ones on the used market, but in a way, it kind of proves my point. Why would a ham sell a perfectly operational amplifier? Not only are HF amplifiers expensive to purchase, but they are expensive to install and to operate. On the installation side, you may have to have your entire shack rewired to handle the additional current. You almost certainly will have to replace your coax with something that can handle that much power. And unless your antenna is rated for full legal power, uh, that will have to be replaced as well. As far as operating expenses goes, well, you're going to be using more electrical power to run your shack. And over time, that can take its toll on your pocketbook. The average cost of all the amplifiers that I've looked up from the full legal power to 1,000 watts is $3,619 or $3,916.86. Aside from an amplifier, what kind of improvement would you, could you make to your station with that kind of money? Off the top of my head, if I had that kind of windfall and that much money sitting there for something for the shack, I'd put up a 50 foot self-supporting tower, top it off with a good quality rotor, uh, and a multi-band multi beam antenna. I'm of a firm belief that money spent on an antenna is a much better investment than money spent on an amplifier. Now, when I was a teenager, I was full of angst and anger, and I felt like the world was out to get me. And uh, like I said, I had some anger issues. My father gave me a piece of advice that has stuck with me through the years. Son, my dad said, never let your alligator mouth write checks that your butterfly ass can't cash. Which brings me to my next point. When studying for our general class licenses, uh, we all learned that the maximum power that should be used is that power necessary 
to maintain reliable communications. Now, for argument's sakes, and I'm going to be doing a lot of what ifs and you know example sort of things that don't necessarily take this as a gospel here. But for argument's sake, let's say a signal report is 599 or 59. Uh, that's what's necessary for reliable communication. And personally, I think it's a little generous. So when I'm listening to two hams chatting on the 80 meter band, and you can find them any night, usually early in the morning or very late at night, and I can tell they're just a couple hundred miles apart, maybe not even that, and they both give each other signal reports of 5.9 plus 30 dB. That tells me that their signals are 1,000 times more powerful than they need to be. Uh, and you can go check my uh, video about decibels here. Uh, it also tells me that they're probably using amplifiers on both ends. So the communication that they want to maintain reliability instead of using a thousand watts could have been accomplished with 10 watts. But who cares, you might ask. They have the capabilities, why shouldn't they be using them? Well, <laughs> it should be obvious. But the obvious sometimes eludes us, myself included. An amplifier does nothing for the received side of your radio. Take a look at this map. Uh, don't pay too much attention to the Pacific. It's here as an example. Uh, this map shows a station in the eastern part of Pennsylvania with a signal pointed toward the Midwest. Now, I'm making the assumption that the frequency and propagation will allow that station to hear at a level necessary for reliable communications. In other words, the station that is sending from Pennsylvania can hear all the stations inside the large red circle. Optimally, uh, the Pennsylvania station should use just enough power to talk to people inside the red circle. Uh, because those are the only people that the Pennsylvania station can hear. Now, let's take a look at the map again. The same Pennsylvania station is now transmitting with a higher level of power than before. Uh, much more than they need to maintain reliable communication. They can still only hear people inside the large red circle, However, they can be heard by people outside the red circle, probably in the blue oval. Again, don't take the example uh, to heart. Uh, now, this is fine for everyone in the red circle, but folks outside of the red circle in the blue area are going to consider it QRM, or man-made noise. On any radio signal report, the difference between 100 and 1,000 watts is 10 dB, or approximately 1.6 S units. Previously in this video, I mentioned that it is uh, a signal report of 599 or 59 that was needed for reliable communication. I then mentioned that I thought that the actual report could be much lower. In actuality, any signal report, even a 5.3 or less, can provide reliable communication. A lot of it depends on what the noise floor is. So, rather than trying to define it in terms of the signal report, let me just say that if you can comfortably understand whoever it is that you're talking to, whether on SSB, FM, CW, RIDI, or digital modes like FT8, and they can understand you, then you have reliable communications and don't need to up your power any more than where you're at right then. If he gives you a signal report of 599, anything, like plus 10, 20, 30, uh, you should immediately reduce your power so it's not the cause uh, QRM to other people who you can't hear. Now my price calculations 
did not include anything except HF amplifiers. And let me make uh, one caveat here. Say you're, uh, you've got one of the uh, Elecraft hiker radios. Uh, they do sell excellent, uh, excellent amplifiers, Elecraft does, that will g match up with that radio. And uh, I, I discuss them in this video. Uh, but the, if you want 100 watts while you're hiking, maybe. 10 watts might be more than enough. On VHF and UHF frequencies, uh, they primarily propagate via line of sight or LOS. If you can see uh, them, you can work them. Distance really doesn't matter as long as you have line of sight between the antennas. Now, conversely, you can be a block away, but if you have a big hill or a large building between you, you can't see them. You may be able to work them because your signals are bouncing around a little bit, but you're not making direct uh, antenna to any antenna communications. Uh, now that's why the best repeaters are on tall towers, atop buildings, or on mountaintops. I think the best example of uh, UHF, VHF, line of sight, power versus distance is uh, to look at satellite communications. From low Earth orbit, yeah, let's call it around 150 miles, to geosynchronous satellites at 22,236 miles, the output power of the satellites is surprisingly low. For example, GPS, which is a low Earth orbit with a high eccentricity, uh, use about uh, 25.6 watts at uh, the L1 frequency of 1575.42 megahertz. Uh, amateur satellites in low Earth orbit are AMSAT friends and that's between 100 and 600 miles work in the 2 meter and 70 centimeter bands and some others. You can actually use your handheld uh, with a specialty uh, uh, antenna to uh, work the, these. Uh, go look at the AMSAT site. I'll, I'll link it down below uh, for how to do that sort of thing. Uh, but they only transmit with around 250 milliwatts geostationary or geosynchronous communication satellites, uh, military, commercial, uh, out at uh, 22,236 miles, like the DISH network satellites, transmit between 1 and 3 watts. That's a long distance for 3 watts. It's a long distance for uh, the lower th satellites at 250 milliwatts. Now, each of these satellites have highly tuned specialty antennas that provide a lot of gain, but no amplifier is used between the transmitter and the antenna. This is another case where money spent in an amplifier was better spent in the antenna. Also, use of an amplifier would uh, fairly quickly drain a satellite's limited uh, power availability. In the VHF UHF range, specifically on the 6 meter band at roughly 50 megahertz, uh, there are the occasional sporadic E openings where a little extra oomph may be needed, but they're rare and only occur under certain circumstances and in certain locations, uh, mostly transmitting over the ocean. Before you invest in an amplifier for these frequencies, do a little research and find out if you fit these circumstances. So, in summary, amps are expensive to buy, install, and operate. There are many improvements uh, that can be made to your station that would be more worthwhile than an amplifier. Uh, when not used properly, amplifiers can create QRM over a wide area beyond your listening capability. Generally, amplifiers are not needed for normal communications. That said, and here's my olive branch, 
if you can afford one, and if you want to have one, then you should get one. Now be sure to check out the output filtering to make sure that you're going to be putting out the cleanest signal that you can. Uh, read the owner's manual for your radio and the operating manual for your amplifier and make sure that they are working well together. Now, as a uh, caveat, I will tell you that I have never used more than 100 watts in my 30 plus years of hamming. Now, I would put my contest scores, my multiple DXCCs, and the tens of thousands of contacts I have in my log as proof that I, at least, have never needed an amplifier. As always, your mileage may vary, and you may determine that you absolutely need an amplifier. Then you should go for it. It is your station, and you're the control operator. Far be it from me to tell you how to run your rigs. Thanks for dropping by my little shack in the corner for a ham shack chat. Uh, this time about amplifiers and whether they're really needed. Please take a moment to give me a like by popping that thumbs up button or icon. Uh, share this content with your friends and if, they, if you think that they might appreciate it. And please leave a comment down below. Constructive criticism is always welcome as are respectful disagreements with my views. As always, at your service. 73 for now. Until the next time, I'm Tom, ND3N, and I'm out.